and welcome to the tutorial about Jupiter. So Jupiter is the big one. As you can see here, Jupiter is uh, really much, much bigger than, for example, Earth, which is down here. And we have the red eye of Jupiter, that is an eternal hurricane on Jupiter. And it is very, very interesting because it just keeps going wild all the time. And uh, this is the most remarkable trait of Jupiter seen from here because this red eye is always always uh, visible. Um, you can it's actually so big, so you can stuff in Earth here if you, yeah, if you made a hole, then Earth could just go into this eye. Um, there's something very interesting in regards to the atmosphere of Jupiter because it is made of gas and. Uh, these streams here, or uh, jet winds, they go up to 500 kilometers per hour. And uh, the other thing is that Jupiter, just to, to go around itself one time, even though it's much bigger than Earth, it only takes around 10 hours for Jupiter to rotate around itself. And uh, meteorologically, if there's such a word, then uh, Jupiter is very, very easy to predict because it's like uh, the weather forecast is uh, always super predictable on Jupiter. And, um, and that's sort of interesting. Um, when we look at the atmosphere of Jupiter, then uh, it has a lot of different layers of gas. And uh, there was once a uh, a space probe going down there, it, uh, its name was Galileo, and um, it found out that there was different layers below the clouds of Jupiter, and um, there was sulfur and other stuff down there, and there were clouds of ammonia and so on, and inside, when you come closer to the center of Jupiter, which uh, none of us has ever been, then uh, it becomes more and more dense. It's like when you dive down in the water, then you can feel the pressure in your head and ears and so on. And Jupiter is just like wild on this. It just becomes more and more heavy when you go towards the center. And at the same time, then uh, some of these clouds are made of sulfur and something called H2S. And uh, that is... Uh, it gives them pretty foul smells. It's like the rotten egg gas and uh, yeah, you name it. So um, it is not the most pleasant place to be. Jupiter is so big that it was almost a star. Let me explain. So the sun is very huge. Let's say this is the sun. It has so much mass that its gravity is very, very big. And Jupiter is also, also has a very big gravity. That means that there is an, a pressure inwards. And down in the center, let me blow this up a little bit. So if we have this planet here, and there's all this gravity towards the middle. Then in the core, it becomes more and more dense. So eventually it will allow what is called a fusion. That means that the, uh, that the atoms, two atoms, they uh, melt together. And then it creates light. That's what's happening all the time in the sun. But Jupiter is just on the brink of this, that means it is not really glowing itself, but it is very, very close to having maybe become a star, a very small star, so to speak. But Jupiter has a tremendous mass. It is uh, like... Jupiter has more than 300 times the mass of Earth. But actually, there's something very, very interesting in regards to Jupiter, if we should ever travel out to its system. And that is that Jupiter is sort of a miniature solar system. It has more than 60 moons. 
And now here in this picture, we can only see here that's uh, that's the biggest four moons in uh, Jupiter. It's Io, Europa, and Ganymede and Callisto, and they are they are actually well, three of them are bigger than our own moon, and um, it is very very interesting because they are so really so different. Europa here is full of ice and uh, water is, has been discovered over, uh, under the ice so there can be a whole interesting world down there and uh, Io that is full of volcanic activity it is like it's also it's very very hot and uh, and it's almost a melting moon it is out of shape and then it's very close to Jupiter so Jupiter is drawing in it with its gravity so Io is uh, sort of pulled out of shape it's not really round um, you have the moon Ganymede that's the biggest moon in the solar system compared to our moon uh, okay this is our moon and then this is Ganymede and then um, it is it also has water on it in the shape of frozen ice and it has quite some iron also so uh, yeah, this could be an interesting place to go. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have too much close-up pictures of it, but it's a total another world to be there. I can assure you of that. <laughs> this is Callisto. It also has ice and iron and ammonia and other stuff in it. And uh, it also looks very different than all the other moons. So... Um, that could also be very interesting to examine that further. Here we have the four biggest moons in comparison. And as you can see, they are so different. They are so interesting. And uh, just for example, look at all the cracks on Europa here. That is uh, ice cracks. Because when the sun is uh, shining on it, then uh, where it's dawn and where it's uh, dusk, then the cracks comes and <laughs> yeah it, it, it looks like a marble ball or something and um, then we have the volcanic planet here and then Callisto and Ganymede so well Jupiter has now I just checked it up there's 67 moons <laughs> and uh, there's lots of smaller ones this is ML Theer that looks a bit odd compared to the other ones it's not so round and it's also much smaller but um, when we talk about Jupiter's moons it is usually the four biggest ones uh, the ones in this picture and uh, they are very very interesting and we'll go deeper into each of the moons later on but uh, thank you very much for listening and don't forget to subscribe see you in the next tutorial